friends and thanks for joining us and today I have my daughter here and we're going to be doing some book reviews on some books we like and some we like less and you know point out the ones that we like the best for different things and just share some money books that we have had and read that um, have helped us and that we like. Uh, I do believe that teaching kids how to manage money is pretty important. Raising children is a lot about teaching them what adult life is going to be like and so when I'm teaching my kids I try my best to make sure that I'm replicating what adult life is going to be like not just what it's like when they're children and that they have to look to their parents for everything and all the money comes from us or that we're like this bank ATM where anytime they need money they just come to us for it that sort of thing. That's not really the way it works in real life and so I try to have them not even start out that way as children. <laughs> so. We have some books that go from very young ages all the way up until older. And so let's go ahead and get started, but let's start at the bottom with the uh, littler kid books and then we'll work our way up toward the older kid books. So the first one we would like to look at is Saving Money for the Future, uh, an introduction to financial literacy. And I liked this book because it was really simple and nice. easy to read. And I thought that the best way to use this book just like it shows right here, is if there was a little kid and they were getting their brand new piggy bank and you were trying to have a book that you could sit down and read and be like, here little Johnny, here's what we're going to do. We have a piggy bank, we're gonna put money into it. If you have something you're trying to save toward or a goal, then it can kind of help jazz them up and motivate them into wanting to make that money and save that money toward being able to buy the thing that they wanted. So. What do you think of this book? I think that it's pretty simple and that it would be good for like... Younger kids, maybe yeah. something like in the three to five range, maybe yeah. even up to six, somewhere yeah. in there. And maybe right as they're just getting into their basic piggy bank type, you know, yeah. style, you know, money management. Okay, yep, I agree. <laughs> so there's the youngest one that we have. Oops, that was loud. The second one we have here is called Managing Money by Linda Crota Benin. So I'm going to go ahead and let her talk about what she thought of this book first. Um, so this book was kind of, it was pretty simple, but it had um, a lot of good things in it. I liked this book I think a little bit less than she did, but I think that the reason she liked this book is because she reads um, fiction and I'm more of a nonfiction person. And so I like facts, I like, you know, really straightforward stuff, and she likes stories and things like that. And so I think that the thing she really liked about this book is that it taught budgeting and how to, you know, uh, put together budgets or how to manage your money or what income is versus expenditures and things like that, all in a story kind of way, which made it sort of, it blended that nonfiction with the fiction and made it more entertaining. So I would say that this book was on a pretty lower level also, probably somewhere in the kindergarten through second grade sort of level, and maybe be just like a really basic brand new introduction to what managing money is. Would you agree? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, the next book, we didn't like all that much, but I will talk about it really quickly because I do think that it has a place for some people. So this one is called, Do I Need It? Or Do I Want It by oh, Making Budget Choices by Jennifer S. Larson. When we first read this book, she said she really didn't like it all that much because it seemed like more of an adult approach to things. When you go through the book, there really aren't pictures of children. They're all adults and it's all explaining about how the adults do things. And so she really didn't like this one and she didn't really think that it would be helpful to littler children. The reason that I liked this book though, and why I think that it does have a place for some, is if there were children in a family where every time you go to the store, a kid's you know throwing a fit for wanting this toy or throwing you know a fit that they need this sucker or something like that, this book really explains why parents don't say yes to everything that kids want, what a budget is, and instead of just saying we don't have money for that, it can maybe help explain to the child why they don't have money for these things and that you don't actually need a candy bar or a sucker. Those are just wants and that those things have to come last. And so if there just isn't money in the budget for it, there just isn't. So that's who I think that this book would be most useful for is the child who seems to want to throw a lot of fits in the stores and you want to explain to them why it is that you have to keep telling them no. So what do you think of that? Yeah. I think that that's pretty accurate. 
Yeah, and probably, prob like, younger children, again, probably in that kindergarten through third grade range, maybe even a little bit earlier than kindergarten, preschool, somewhere in there. So still on the lower level of the age range. All right. The next one, one of my favorites. I'm gonna go ahead and let her talk about this one first though because she didn't really like this book, so. Go ahead, what did you yeah. think? Well, I thought that it was pretty good and that it had good information, but it had pretty scrambled information is what I thought of it. So the name of the book, which I guess I forgot to say just now, was Money Sense, Managing Money by Andrew Einsbruck, perhaps? She didn't like this because she felt like it was a little bit scattered when it came to the information, but when I went through it, I felt like there was an introduction which covered a lot of different terms, and then in the rest of the book it actually went through each of those terms. But I could definitely see how if somebody wasn't really familiar with the terms before, if say a third through fifth grader, which I think is the age range that this more targets, if a person who was that age hadn't heard of the word budget or expenditure or debt or things like that, hearing all of these terms can make them feel overwhelmed and maybe not be able to follow along and understand very well. And so it does take a little bit of an introduction to already having some information and kind of understanding the concepts before you can launch into, you know, the information covered in this book. But honestly, I really like this book because it was very complete. It covered a lot of different topics. I mean, the contents say money sense, managing money, earning money, growing money by saving, growing money by investing, spending money wisely, which basically teaches being frugal, <laughs> making a budget, managing debt, who wants to be a millionaire, and then some more information. So it really, again, covers a lot of different topics in one place. And so that's the reason why I liked it. I felt like it was a good value for it just being one book, very easy to read, very clear information, but it does require a child that has a basic concept of a lot of the knowledge of some of the terms before you can launch into this. All right, the next book, Using Credit Wisely by Kate Marsico. What do you think of this book? Well, I thought that it covered a lot of good things um, and um, taught you a lot to you that somebody would need to know about credit. Honestly, I liked this book a lot. <laughs> I think that yeah. this book for a lot of even adults could learn a lot of stuff from this book because even though it's a very easy read and it's actually pretty short, it covers a lot of information about the different types of debts and you know how to choose you know, how to finance certain things. It goes through different scenarios and it has these little blurbs where it has you actually calculate out some of the math on some of the loans and things like that. And so it really teaches you how to use debt wisely. And it also teaches about credit scores and how important they can be, you know, to keep our credit score good and how our life can suffer if they don't. Basically, this teaches a whole lot of information that schools don't currently teach. So. I think that this is probably a must read for most children, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> and it should be added to the school curriculums that we already have. So if there's any parents out there who don't even homeschool, if you want to add something to, you know, and be teaching your children to, this is probably something that you might want to look at. So um, what age range would you say that this book was most appropriate for? Um, I would say that it's like three to six, like, like the last one. I would but agree. it was kind of... If you wanted to, you could probably teach your kids younger than that, but they might not be able to understand it. Yeah, I agree. I would say probably at least a third grader, and the age range could go as high as sixth, seventh grade even, maybe even a little beyond that, eighth. Um, but it does have pictures in it, so when you get into those age ranges, kids don't typically like picture books at that age range, although the information would still be you know, pertinent and very useful to them. They might feel like the book was you know, um, less than they could actually, you know, relate to. So yes, very good book. I loved this one. Okay, next one, we're gonna go over two books at once because they were basically very similar. However, one of them we liked a lot more than the other. What do you think about each of these books? Well, this- Okay, we need to introduce the books though first. I'm sorry. Yeah. Dollars and Cents, A Kid's Guide to Using Money, Not Losing Money uh, by Elaine Scott. And then this one is the Everything Kids Money book, second edition uh, by Brett Warder? Samber. Samber. All right, go ahead. Um, Talk about the one you liked less first. Um, so this one, 
it had a lot of good information, but it seemed to be um, the information was kind of for maybe like middle school, higher up there, mm -hmm. but um, they had put a little kiddish like illustrations and things in there to make it fun for little kids when it really didn't seem geared toward little, little I agree. smaller kids. And then what was the B word that you called this word when you this book? When you were reading it, you said it was b b b Boring. Boring. <laughs> it made money stuff not fun. And we definitely need to make it fun when we're teaching children. So, yes. So our choice was actually this book uh, for the upper level grades. So something more like at least fifth, probably through eighth, even a little bit, maybe beyond if need be. But yeah, this book covered everything. How money is made, you know, all this stuff about investing and much more detail about budgeting and all the pretty much as it says, the everything kids money book. Yeah. But I also think that this could be, if a child was already being taught these types of concepts, you know, it doesn't even have to be for a fifth grader. I think it could be relatable to anyone even as young as maybe third grade. So it really covers a wide variety of age ranges and it really covers a wide variety of material. And so this one was probably one of the best values of all the books that we've covered for yes. the upper grades, so. We liked this one a lot. Mm -hmm. And then really quick, let's go ahead and cover one more book, which doesn't actually have anything to do with money specifically. However, it does kind of relate to earning money, and so I kind of figured we should add this one in. This one is called... Kidpreneurs, Young Entrepreneurs with Big Ideas. By... Adam Torrin and Matthew Torrin. Yes, so kidpreneurs, like entrepreneurs, but for children. So this really breaks it down on how to start a business and how you know to calculate expenses and how the money that you actually make from something isn't pure profit. Like if you run a lemonade stand and you have to pay $10 for materials in order to run it and then you do $20 in sales, you didn't make $20, you only made $10 in profit because of those expenses. And it breaks it down in a really simplistic way Basic. that all children pretty much can understand. And it gives a lot of different ideas for how to, you know, even start little kid businesses and earn money. You know, dog walking, babysitting, you know, mowing lawns. Lemonade stand. Yeah, pretty much all, a lot of different things, you know, some that are more basic and some that are actually a little bit more. And, yeah, it basically just even gives good information for an adult who wants to start, you know, a business and wants to know just the basic steps on how to do that. So, Kidpreneurs, a good book about how to teach kids how to earn money for themselves so that their parents don't only have to be the ones who are constantly giving kids money or when kids want to make money they don't have to burden only their parents to have to come up with that money to be you know giving their children um, they can actually go and make money in the neighborhood and from their friends and families and things like that and you know neighbors and things and then they can be earning money toward their goals from other people which is good <laughs> so and learn how to be more independent so there you go. Those were our kid money books that we liked and some that we liked less and the ones that we recommend for the different age ranges. So thanks for joining us. I'm Frugal Green Girl and this is Frugal Green Girl Jr. <laughs> anyway, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.